How's it going, ladies and gents? Welcome back to Finland Saga Season 2, Episode 5. So, for those of you who were watching the live stream for this episode, um, apologies. The internet got cut off. Fortunately, we were still in the middle of the opening when that happened, so I haven't actually seen the actual episode yet. Um, so I'm just recording this offline now, just for this episode. Um, so. I'm just gonna talk about some of the things that I mention and discuss in the intro for that live stream here, um, and then we'll just continue on with the reaction. So um, I mentioned how I feel like season two of Villain Saga has been really, really well. You know, it's been well directed. It's been well crafted. It's, it's been great. It's been great. Um, the previous episode was probably the best episode of the entire season. Like, no doubt about it. Like, compared to episodes 1, 2, and 3, it's definitely the best episode, both production-wise and direction-wise and story-wise. Um, and it's definitely one of the, you know, um, one of the best episodes of Vinland in general, I would say, compared to some of the stuff in Season 1. Um, would I say it's the best episode ever? Still too early to say. I mean, there's a lot of fantastic episodes in season one. But it's up there. It, it is definitely up there. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really, really glad that Vinland is, is, is at an all-time high. I feel like most people, at least in terms of like the reception that this season is, has been getting, I feel like a lot of people have been pretty happy with this adaptation, right? Um, as an anime only, I can't really speak on how well adapted this is, you know, because I can't, I don't really have a reference to, to compare it to, but speaking to, you know, you know, um, some manga readers out there, you know, who are watching this, they've been pretty happy about it. They've been, they've been saying like, you know, the season has gone above and beyond, you know, their expectations. I've also heard, you know, like they've added, you know, a lot of original scenes that kind of enhances the experience. Someone even told me that apparently the the barn scene, the farm scene in in, in the previous episode with Thorfinn and and Einar, that was actually expanded upon a lot in in the anime. You know, like it wasn't that fully detailed in the manga, and that kind of surprised me because that was like the, probably the best moment of the episode. That was like definitely the highlight of the episode. Um, but hearing about it just, just makes me feel happy that Vinland is in the right hands. You know, they they did the same the, these sorts of things in season one as well, right? I've heard a lot of manga readers said, you know, like season one had a lot of original scenes. And when they say what those original scenes are, it surprises me because again, some of those original scenes are actually my one of my favorite moments in in the show. So to hear that one of my favorite moments in season two is actually, you know, most of it is actually anime original. Kind of goes to show, like, the passion that, you know, that these creators have been putting into the show and how much they actually know and how much they uh, understand the source material. So in that front, I am really happy and really glad. And this makes me want to watch more. It makes me hype that that each week that we're gonna get this, and it's it's definitely it's definitely a highlight for for the beginning of this year. That's for sure. Anyways, that's pretty much it for my intro. Um, as usual, timer based reaction on YouTube, picture in picture version in the description below. Um, if you do enjoy the reaction, hit like, subscribe if you want to. If you want to support me, then you can head on over to Patreon. You get early access to a bunch of other stuff. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. On with the reaction.
All right, here we go. Armies. Oh, we're going to get it, are we? Canute. They teased him at the end of the episode. Of the previous episode. Ah, oh, yes. Here we go. So what have you been up to, Canute? Crows. We're going to see his in, in internal thoughts about all of this. Well, this is going to be a Canute Focus episode, is it? Reusing the same scenes in from season one, not really reanimating all of it. Oh, baby. That hit was something new that they added. So is this. Love how they did that. Love how they did that. The march goes on. Hmm. Right, chaos, right? Aha! Thorkel. Okay, okay. Ethelred.
no trust at all. The detail on that whoa. Oh yes. The broken the broken skull right over there. Farmlands destroyed. We're still in the past because of the beard. Hasn't fully grown. Ah. Oh. Yeah, this is your region, right? That that you were given. Right, Mercia. Okay, well, let's let's see how Knud handles this. Hmm. Yeah, but you gotta... Still a man of principle. Very different from his father. But how long is that gonna last, though? Knut looks great! Oh, the Yom's Vikings, or something, or somebody else. Mm, oh, they're talking about okay, okay, about the leaders. Hmm. Thorkel. <laughs> what is happening? This music. Yeah, move, move, move. You know, you don't want to get in get in the way. Ah. Uh, of course. That was a fun little bait and switch there. Hmm. Thorkel is definitely like the wild dog that that is hard to tame. That's for sure. <laughs> I said. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. 
can't avoid war. That's true. <laughs> the way he is, the way he's posing, and the way he he, ex he um expresses himself. <laughs> oh, I miss Thorkel so much. This is great. It's fine, it's fine, Gunner, it's fine. Hmm. You can see the wisdom in... in him. Trying to paint him as like this wise leader. Oh yes, beautiful. Spoils of war. That look on his face, though. And how the music was playing during that scene? Stepping it like it's nothing, right? Can buy him out. But Walda of England. Yeah, his own territory. Lighting for, for Canute here definitely makes him feel more ominous. Hmm. Calm down. Yeah. Don't. Ah. Okay. Oh, this music is so good. Oh, the political plays and in, in, in all of this. It's really great. Political mind games. Pl 
Floki seems like really happy about that. Like he was proud of it. Let him speak. Persuasion. Canute is choosing his words really, really well here. Not really. The cross. Tested. Oh, it's going to be something cruel. Oh, yes. The background has been really, really great. Production-wise, this episode has been, I would say, as good as the previous episode. In terms of um, consistency. The sun has been always in the middle in, in this episode. Silence, not an answer. Signals everywhere. Shows the vast reach of... of Knut's, like, power, right? Symbolic. Wow. Wow. The imagery. Goosebumps. <laughs> Legit goosebumps. Fear. This is it.
offering him one last time. You don't have a choice, dude. Wow, this, this episode. The imagery in this episode. Canute. Poisoned. It is said. Edmund. Love that they keep focusing on chalices in this episode, tying back to Swain's death in season one. I almost forgot about him, but but he was um, Ascalot's like second in command in the first season. Took me a while to 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 remember. And this is the coronation. All eyes on him. Wow. King of England. End of the episode. Wow. What an episode. What an episode. Wow. Wow. What an episode. What a episode. Um, as expected, this episode is focusing on Canute, right? We were teased about him in the last few seconds of the previous episode, and now we're seeing, you know, um, what has been going on with Canute. Where has, where has he been? What is he up to? Wow. Starting the episode with like a tiny little flashback of, you know, the end of the prologue with Askeladd and everything was, you know, that was great. Kind of puts us, put up, put us um, up to speed with, with everything, you know, like going back and setting up the mood of this episode, right? It all began there. This is where it all began, right? The death of King Swain and Canute. Unexpectedly becoming the next king, right? The next inheritor of the crown, you would say, right? He wasn't expecting this. This wasn't planned at all. Like, he wasn't really expecting himself to become the leader of, you know, like the Danish armies. And yet, he was forced upon it, right? can't think of another word side forced right he wasn't expecting this to happen at that very moment but it happened and he needs to step up regardless
And now he is in this insurmountable position, right? To not only be a leader, but to uphold his own ideals, right? Because as you can, because as we can see, right, later on down the line, right, with Gunner and everything. And he, again, beautiful imagery, but again, you know, like, we, you have Gunner right out here, right? S whispering to him, speaking to him, going like, Your Majesty, you know, maybe we should do this, maybe we should do that, right? You know, pushing the old ways again to Canute. And Canute, of course, still firmly denies it and goes, No. We're not doing it that way. We're not doing the old ways. We're doing, me, we're doing it my way. I am your king. I am your leader. And you will do what I say. And really love, again, like, like this dynamic between not just Canute, but Floki, Gunner, and even Thorkel. I'm actually really keen to see you know what else they have in store right because this they feel like their own separate group right you obviously you have like Thorfinn and Einar with the more introspective character studies in the farm but with Canute and Thorkel, Floki, Gunnar and everything you know like again the character study is still there right within Canute Right, we're we are seeing a character who who started like this and has become this. Right, Canute is a character study on his own. Right. Also, the you know you know also you know like tying back to like the themes of Vinland Saga and you know if we're going to compare it to stuff like Thorfinn and Einar you know about what it means to be a true warrior, right? Warrior can can mean a lot of things. You know, like what path do you what are you going to go with? What lengths, and how much are you going to sacrifice? You know, how much are you going to sacrifice your kin? How much are you going to sacrifice? You know, your friendships, how much you're going to sacrifice yourself, how much you're going to sacrifice your own humanity, whether if it's for the better good, that remains to be seen. But what we can definitely see from Knut is a sense of resolve, right? He, he, he has his own resolve. He has, again, his own ideologies, his own feelings, his own um, perspective, and in, in what constitutes as good and bad. And he is going to follow that to the very end. Right? And I don't think there's any persuasion attempts that is going to succeed. At least for now. At least for now. Politics is a dangerous game. It can change people. Right? People can come into politics and, you know, at the very beginning they can make Promises that they're probably not going to keep. People come into politics maybe at the beginning. Feeling like they, that they can change things. But at the end, they may actually succumb to it and become corrupt themselves. Power corrupts. That is true. Is it going to corrupt Canute? We don't know yet. What this episode shows is quite the opposite, actually. Canute being, you know, instead of Canute being corrupted by power, it's actually the other way around. It's actually the corruption being taken over by Canute. Canute is the new power. He is the new order, I would say, right? Then there is this moment here when the leader of, of Mercia or the leader of the specific region of Mercia gives him silver and gold, right? 
a sign of truth. And it's really a means to get rid of Canute and, and tell him to, you know, to, to go away. And what does Canute do? Steps on the gold, steps on the silver. Says this is nothing. Who do you think you are? Huh? Who do you think you are? You think you can bribe me? You think you can get away with money? Do you think that this amount would satisfy me? This is nothing. This is nothing compared to what I have. And he shows him an example. He lit a signal. Beautiful imagery, by the way. Suddenly, everywhere surrounding them, the beacons are lit. Lights everywhere. Smoke and ash. Showing the extent of Knut's power, how much he actually controls. Right? Those amount of smokes in the background just kind of goes to show like, hey, this is my land. I control it. If I want this place burned to the ground, I'm going to do it. You, so you better do what I say. And this is, by all means, oppression, isn't it? Knut is showing force. Knut is saying, hey, I can destroy you. But I'm not going to because I am a kind king. But I have the power to do so. So you better, you better obey me. And that's the one aspect of, of Knut's character that, that may be, sh you know, that may show a sign of, of, of corruption. Not corruption in the sense of, you know, um, not what you would expect a corrupt person is, but corruption in the sense that the, how do I describe it? Like, like the way he would take control of power, right? Because you can give somebody power, you can give somebody power, and that person in the beginning wouldn't necessarily use it in its full potential, right? They would say, no, 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 I'm not going to use it in its entirety, I'm not going to use force. But then they're going to use it anyways. They realize the vast potential that it has. It, they realize how effective of a tool it is, especially during wartime. And they use it to set an example. Now, we can talk about like the moral ethics, the, the judgmental value of one's own character in, in any other way. But it still doesn't deny the fact that, yes, Canute is using his own power to subjugate his, you know, his opponents. Very different from the canoe that we know before, but I would say it, it is a natural progression. It's wartime anyways, right? It's, it is wartime. It's these political intrigues, these political moves, right? It may not be what they, what they want. 
they have to do it in order to, you know, to further their goals and, and ideals. And Canute being a character that is so, um, what's the word? A character that is, a character whose resolve is, I would say, unbreakable. I would say this is, once again, a very natural progression for Knut's character, right? You have a character who, who is like this that didn't have any power in season one, and now you're giving him all of the power. What does he do? Such an interesting character. Such an interesting character. And knowing that he is, you know, based on like an actual person, right? This is based on, you know, a real person in real life, right? King Canute does exist, right? I mean, a lot of characters in Finland is actually based on real, you know, in real, real life person, right? Even Ashkelad, even, well, Ashkelad is more of, more of like a, based on like a legend or whatever, but like Thorfinn is an actual person. Leave is obviously, you know, an, like an actual person and whatever. Now I'm kind of curious to see like how well the depiction of Canute is. Obviously I can't actually see it because if I, if, if I read on Canute, I'm probably going to spoil myself on, on Villain Saga, but... I do, I do want to see more. I want to see more of this. I want to see more of the political intrigue. I want to see more of the, um, I want to see how much the war is, is going to affect Canute, his mind, his, his character, who he is. And how much the crown is going to affect him. Like, if you look at this face, right? It is a face of determination. Calm, cold, collected, but powerful. I think that's pretty much it for my discussion. Um, I also realized that my discussion may probably be all over the place in this episode, but... Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed my reaction and my discussion to Villain Saga Season 2 Episode 5. I will see you all next week for Episode 6. Take care. Have a nice day. Peace.